Hey guys, it's Panther, and today I want to take a look at one of EU West's top players, specifically Jebsu and his Klepto TF. Now, Jebsu is known for some of his crazy builds that he makes work in high challenger on the EU West ladder. However, this one might be the craziest of all of them. But I swear this build does work and I want to show you how you can abuse it to grab as much elo as possible before this gets nerfed. Now typically you would run Comet or Airy on TF or even Fleet Footwork. However, recently Jebsu has only been running Klepto. Now the reason behind this is not for the Keystone itself. While it is good on TF, it is more for the options that it opens up in the trees and how they pair together. Basically, you want to be able to capitalize on Magical Footwear, Time Warp Tonic, and Biscuit Delivery. If you take Inspiration Secondary, you're not able to capitalize on all three of these things. You also want to be able to capitalize on the Resolve Tree and the ability for it to keep you in lane and keep you topped off and prevent you from being one shot. However, you still are able to go Sorcery Secondary if they don't have a team that is very much of a threat to you early on into the game. So without further ado, I want to show you three of the pages that he runs. Now the first one is into Assassins. This is going to be into very, very bursty teams, and it looks like this. Note that he takes Bone Plating, but he doesn't take any Resists. This is because he is able to itemize early resists with the extra gold that he gets from this build. Also with bone plating and time warp tonic he's not entirely scared of being 100 zeroed in this lane since he's able to just stay topped off with the time warp and bone plating stops him from being 100 zeroed. If he's into a heavy poke lane like Xerath for example then he would take a rune page that looks like this. Again, notice he is not taking any resists and he's just letting the resolve tree do its job. Into poke, you take second wind so that you are able to just constantly be ticking that extra HP so that you can stay fully topped off. This allows you to stay in lane much longer, even though you have corrupting pot plus time warp. Remember, corrupting pot only has three charges, so second wind constantly ticking really, really makes a big difference here. The last one is against a lane that's not going to have any pressure into you. This is something that you would take against non-traditional mids, say Morgana for example, or mid laners that are just going to look to shove and roam, for example Aurelian Soul. Note that he doesn't go for hyperscaling in taking Gathering Storm in absolute focus. He wants more utility, that's what TF is all about. Keep in mind with this build going Gathering Storm in absolute focus is going to give you AD, not AP a majority of the time and it's just not going to work all too well for you. Now, the summoner spell that you're going to be wanting to take the vast majority of the time is TP. Other options are Ghost, Ignite, or Cleanse. However, you have plenty of move speed, so you shouldn't really need Ghost. Ignite is really only if you're looking for kills in solo queue, so it can work, but it's a little bit more risky than TP. And Cleanse is only if you're into very heavy CC, for example, Elise and Lissandra. Exhaust is also an option if you're into something like Zed or Talon, but it's probably best if you just take TP in most scenarios. Now, getting into the actual game and build order itself, you need to play the early levels very, very, very carefully. This is pretty much the only time that you're going to be at risk of dying because you don't have a trading keystone and the enemy laner will have a trading keystone. Make sure you stay safe, look to get as much CS as possible, and shove if they are allowing you to. Since you are ranged and you start your W on TF, you're going to be able to outshove a lot of characters, however there are going to be some that you're just not going to be able to. On your first base, you want to be looking to get Phage or Phage Components. Do not get a Dark Seal. Now the reason you do this is for two reasons. First of all, you already have plenty of sustain, so you don't need Dark Seal for even more sustain, and it's just going to slow down you buying other items. Second of all, you want that Ruby Crystal, which will allow you to play a lot more aggressive in the lane because you're no longer at risk of being one shot if you have a little bit extra HP paired with that Bone Plating or second wind or whatever it is that you are taking. You also want a longsword because it will change your adaptive force from AP to AD which will allow you to shove faster paired with the attack speed that you're taking in your runes. One big no-no before your first base is trading instead of 
farming. This is something that I see a lot of players get baited into by Klepto. You will always want to prioritize creeps over a klepto trade because creeps are more likely to give you more gold. Do not get baited into only trading for klepto and giving up creeps. This is not worth it. Only go for klepto stacks if it's not going to prevent you from getting any CS. Now the first component that you want to be looking for is not Sheen, it is actually Phage. Phage will give you all that move speed that you need to take extended trades if you want or to back out if you need to. After your Phage you want to itemize Sheen and then Nasher's Tooth. Sheen will allow you to trade a little bit harder and Nasher's Tooth is just the last component. It doesn't do very much for TF except for allow him to attack a little bit faster and stack his E a little bit faster so you don't really want to prioritize Nasher's Tooth if possible. After your Trinity, you want to finish your boots. Just get whatever resists that you need out of your boots. If you're against an AD laner, then make sure to go Tabby. If you're against an AP laner, then make sure to go Merc Treads. Alternatively, if you're against a magic damage team that has next to no CC, you can just itemize a Negatron Cloak. However, you will be missing out on a lot of move speed from completing your boots, so it is a bit of a trade-off. Now, after the Trinity Force and your boots are completed is where the build gets super spicy. Typically, he will itemize a Wit's End or a Nasher's Tooth next. This is to help you deal more sustained damage and synergizes really, really well with TF's E. It's at this point that he goes from being more of a pokey champion with his abilities to an on-hit champion. No matter which item he builds, it's for the same reason, he just wants attack speed and more magic damage. Wit's End helps a lot against heavy magic damage if that is a threat, whereas Nash's Tooth is if he doesn't really care about the magic damage on their team. Now, after he finishes his Nash's Tooth or his Wit's End, he goes for a Rapid Fire Cannon. This allows him to get a lot longer range gold cards. This is one of the best items that TF can buy, especially on an on-hit build where he doesn't really lose out on any damage for building it. It also gives the added benefit of allowing TF to play the fight from much further away if he needs to. This is an especially good item into artillery mages like AP Kog'Maw or Xerath or Azir or even Vel'Koz. It also works well into heavy engage comps since you're able to exert a much larger zone of control to prevent them from hard engaging onto you. Once you have your core three items, you want to look to be splitting on the map and then alting towards your team. Remember, the benefit of this specific build is it is very, very hard to 1v1 in the side lane. It has so much sustained damage. While grouping for your team for a pick is okay if your ultimate is down, you want to be looking to spend as much time in a side lane as possible. This will allow you to get a lot of gold in EXP as well as a lot of klepto procs for whoever is matching you in the side lane. Just to reiterate, do not be permanently grouped with your team if you are doing this build. You need to be comfortable in a side lane on your own. The next item that he most commonly builds is Ginsu's Rage Blade, which will just allow you to get even more ease and even more attack speed. There isn't much else to say about the item, it's literally just to give him that phantom hit and more damage. Now for your last item, you're going to want to pick up either Nasher's Tooth or Wit's End, whichever you didn't already build. This will cap you out on attack speed, however, it's not too big of a deal because you are just going to be dealing so much damage with the scalings and the on hit, and all of it put together will still deal plenty of damage. That does it for today's video on Jebsu's Klepto TF mid. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. We post new content by challenger players every day. If you have any ideas for future videos that we can make, make sure to let us know in a comment down below. As always, I hope you learned something valuable and I will see you in the next one.